Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, War or two, quick match gameplay. This time around we are on Karak Angor, fighting as Bretonia against the forces of the Empire Counts. And I wanted to try something that I haven't really done in a while, that was an infantry build with Bretonia. Uh, lately, if, if you watch most of the Bretonia replays on my channel, most of them revolve around some sort of cavalry, whether it be Hippogriffs, Questing Knights, Grail Knights, sometimes with Grail Guardians mixed in, usually well over half of my army composition our cost is invested in cavalry, flyers, that sort of stuff. And the infantry is basically just there as a cannon fodder meat shield. Uh, usually the archers might be there to support, but really nothing too fancy as far as the uh, support element, as far as the infantry goes. But this used to be the meta in Warhammer 1. It was, it was infantry builds, and I really wanted to give it a shot. Uh, it's something that's kind of fallen out of favor. And I figured, you know, is it still viable? Grail Relic? Uh, it hasn't really taken that many nerfs. Um, and I, I wanted to give it a shot. So here for this build, I decided to go with uh, Fan Enchantress. She's, of course, a great lord no matter what you do. Uh, we don't want to go, like, not a competitive here, uh, or to the max. But she's got Mist of the Lady, of course, re Regrowth, Earth Blood, Arcane Conduit, Favor of the Fate, and Chalice of Potions. Uh, so she's pretty potent. Frontline is a mix of Four Foot Squires, as well as uh, the Holy Wardens of Elamai Tala in the center. Uh, these guys, of course, with their magic damage, are great against ethereal units and stuff like that, against physically resistant troops, and they'll melt through the lower tier chaff that the uh, Vampire Counts tend to bring pretty efficiently, because they've got crazy weapon strength and a really good melee attack. Second line, we do have the Beast Slayers of Bastone. Uh, we also do have some Spearmen at Arms on one end, Spearmen at Arms with shields in the very back, and uh, one more unit of Spearmen at Arms over there on that flank. Uh, three units of Peasant Bows with Fires, and our front line is being stiffened up by two Grail Relic. And Grail Relics have taken a series of nerfs over the years, or over the patches, uh, but the only two that I can think of really was a drop in HP that came with a drop in cost, and then way back when, I think at the beginning of Warhammer 2, uh, Mortal Empires, they lost 4 leadership on the Icon of Devotion, but it's still plus 12 leadership and immunity psychology in OE, which is crazy. You can see those foot squires up to 89 leadership, which is comparable to the Holy Wardens here, uh, almost, who are at 95. And that's why I didn't have the Grail Relic over in the center, because I, I figured that Holy Wardens will hold without it. In the back, we do have two, two units of Grail Knights as well, to provide some cavalry flexibility and some good old support, because you always want to bring some mass, some cav, uh, you can't just go, f because Brit because Bretonia doesn't have any black powder weapons, and they don't really have the, the greatest shooting tools, you can't just go with mass infantry the way Empire, for example, can. Uh, you always want some cavalry. Now, for my opponent, he decided to go with a very Vargeist heavy build, which is interesting. Uh, his front line here, a bunch of Grave Guards, Skilled Spears. Uh, Grave Guard actually trades rather well into the Foot Squires. I do believe they might even win in a straight up engagement, which is pretty crazy. A White King here in the center, mounted on a horse. Uh, so he he's pretty solid. White King has given a bonus for his infantry, and uh, he's, he's pretty solid now at fighting uh, with uh, low end troops. He's being backed by Vladdy Daddy over here, who does have the Blood Drinker. Uh, invocation of the heck and raise dead personally uh, this is a this is my personal tip here guys if you're playing as vampire counts and you bring Vlad if you only have enough money for one of his items don't bring blood drinker bring his Karstein ring because Vlad is almost always going to hit his healing cap in my experience uh, without it so another thing here that I think is a bit of a mistake that my opponent did not bring either either his R of dark grandeur or his uh, Big, uh, master Begotlement, so he doesn't have that melee attack debuff, nor does he have the uh, leadership debuff, which I think is both great to have on Vlad. So th those are just a few tips got there, guys, real quick, on when you're running Vlad. Over here, we do have the Graveyard with the Ray Weapons, as well as the Sturzman stiffen up the front line. Both very good choices. Uh, Graveyard with the Ray Weapons, a little interesting against Bretonia. I usually just go with normal Graveyard, but they can definitely mulch through the poor foot squires. Blood Knights over on one flank, and then the Triple Vargas in the top, one of which is the Devils of Schwarzhofen, but one of the big gimmicks with the Devils is their Terror which is not going to do very much against all these Grail Reliques. Regardless, though, we are both pushing in because, well, of course, neither of us is artillery, neither of us is looking to do any shooting shenanigans. Uh, you can see the Blood Knights here do overextend a little bit or do push out ahead of their infantry a little bit, and they're going to take a volley from the Fire Arrows or a little bit of shooting from the Fire Arrows there, pouring into the Skeleton Spears, and you can see even the Blood Knights actually take a little bit of damage. Uh, one of the cool things about Fire Arrows uh, that some of you guys might be interested to know is the fact that they'll actually out-damage normal arrows <laughs> Out until a unit has like H uh, has armor at, uh, up to like 120 or so, uh, because of how high their non-AP damage is. So that's a fun fact for the day. Now, the Graveyard of the Grey Weapons are going to become the target of my shooting. You might think, why not Spears with their low armor? Well, because these guys are a much more important target. I know the Skeleton Spears are going to roll over and die. 
Uh, and unfortunately, the Vargites are not really standing still very long. They just did stop moving, but my opponent's kind of maneuvering around, looking for a weak spot. Uh, and you can see the Graveguard taking quite a pounding. Losing hundreds of HP from each volley. Uh, that low accuracy just doesn't really matter at this range. And they're already down 2,000 HP before lines even meet. Fan Chantry in the meantime is going to dive over into this pocket over here to start mortis engineering all these troops down as my opponent does launch a summon of zombies. So these peasant bows are going to be forced to pull back uh, and try to extricate themselves, but nonetheless the damage is stacking up on the graveyard. And def there's definitely some brutal stuff. You can see they're already down to about half models, and uh, that's good for me, not good for my opponent. Foot squires here are getting bogged down and struggling as the White King and Vlad, which was to be expected, but with the Grail Relic in there, all this all this pocket is going to hold for a really long time. You can see even the Spearman at Arms holding okay. Over here, my opponent does try to get a little cheeky, does on the Grand Lights. I was expecting him to commit, but um, he immediately pulls back with the Vargas, so very astute, very on top of his micro, uh, which means both of my uh, Grand Lights are now not really able to catch them. These guys just got up into the air before the second unit of Grand Lights caught them. Uh, and although my opponent will use a few, lose a few Vargas models, uh, I did waste the regrowth there, essentially. So that was a bit of a mistake. Now, though, my opponent is going to dive into the back line here against my foot squires. Unfortunately, the Grail Relic is not close enough. I should have pulled it back in, uh, but I pulled it away because I was thinking he was going to dive in on my Pleasant Bows. He did not. And uh, now he's actually going to tear out my foot squires and completely buckle this front line. And this was actually a great maneuver because uh, had I kept the Grail Relic right here, these guys would have held together. It would have been just fine. But uh, because they were not, they are suddenly falling apart. But the Peasant Bows, you know, they're raining death and destruction down on them. Uh, you can see the fire is just raining in because the peasant bows with their great range are obviously going to be able to swat at these annoying flyers pretty effectively. And one unit is already crumbling. So although my opponent did break this flank, he has been suffering huge losses on his bar guys. Down to nine miles, down to four and crumbling. Uh, these guys down to seven. And uh, yeah, my opponent doesn't really have the tools to keep him alive. I don't know why he doesn't have Invocation of Nack. He might not have the Winds of Magic right now. Uh, or he might not have noticed. I'm not entirely sure. He did summon some zombies though and he's been summoning his troops on the back line trying to shut down these uh, troops there. In the meantime, you can see the Grail here, a bit stuck in the front, but you can see the Fate Chantry is now melting through this front line rather efficiently, and Invocation Neck finally does go down, uh, so perhaps he just missed it, and uh, you can see the Fire Arrows are tearing into the Devil's Force off, and who, with their 10 armor, really don't stand a chance, it's really not where they want to be in life, and you can see they're just getting pounded, because we have so many archers, we've got archers over here, we've got archers over here, over here my Grail Knight's got a charge on the Blood Knights, but uh, a little bit of a haggard charge, and they're going to get ground down pretty effectively by these uh, warriors, uh, of Aberash there, so they're not having a good time of it. The Grand Lights are definitely going to lose. They don't really have the support they need. But, you know, Foot Squires extricated themselves over here. The Devils are finally going to go down, which is only going to leave this single unit of Vargas up in the air. Um, these peasants are going to rally, and we're going to be able to pound these last few Vargas out of the sky. And once my opponent's mobility is gone, I'm going to be in a much better position. Over here, the Grand Lights, of course, fighting tooth and nail. They're, they're Grand Lights, so they're not just going to roll over and give up. But, um, Blood Knights will win this point pretty decisively. Over in the meantime, the Fan Chantress with her Battle Pilgrims does manage to melt this flank. You can see the Graveguard with Grave Weapons at this point off the field. Over here, it's just a matter of time before this Graveguard gets taken out, especially as we start pincering them. And that constant hail of fire from the Fyros. My opponent's been summoning troops, but he just doesn't have enough disruption in the back line. And because of that, these Vargas have just got taken to task. And you can see they're down to 120 mile HP, and they're, they're not going to be long for this world. Over here in the meantime, the Blood Knights diving in against the Peasant Bows, who are about to have a horrible time. Just look at those Peasant Bows fly. Oh my god. Poor guys. Just look at them. That guy's getting up immediately routes. Like, that, that's what happens when you're a Peasant and you get run in with the Blood Knights. But these Grail Knights over here coming in to save save their friends, to save their, uh, save their crooked and... Uh, degenerate peasant friends, and they're in there to da deal with these Blood Knights, so the Grand Knights will kind of, at this point, take the, take the fight, because the Blood Knights are just so badly mauled. Over in the meantime, we are going to get a nice little Earth Blood, trying to keep our troops in the fray, and you can see the ba Beast Slayer Bastion up to 72 kills, really slugging it out, dragging these guys into the muck, especially the White King Mount or a horse in a bad spot here. You can see we're going to pull these Grail Relics in, so we're just keeping this whole pocket fighting constantly, my opponent has no way to stop me from fighting. Uh, once these troops, I would notice them, they're going to be able to pull in as well. And uh, at this point, you can see the last of the Vargas are going to go down trying to help those Blood Knights. Uh, we do have a handful of Grand Knights still around kicking. And things are looking pretty good for the forces of Bretonia. You can see now we're going to start raining in on the Sternsmen. The Sternsmen do have weakness to fire because they've got regen. Uh, certainly they still have 90 armor. But, you know, when they're drained, one of the cool things is, well, not cool thing for them is that when they're drained, their armor is worth less. Uh, so the fire arrows, you know, they're going to start doing a lot of damage, and uh, they're going to be melting these guys. And you can see, despite everything, the, these guys are having a bad time. Fan Chantress is in there melting them. Uh, their melee attack isn't really good enough to hit her consistently. So they're in a really grim spot. Of course, Vlad is still around kicking. Uh, Blood Drinker, 
plus his innate hunger, keeping him tip top. Uh, there's just no way I was going to take him out uh, effectively. That's one of the things with Vlad. You bring him because he does is indestructible, uh, essentially. The Sturgeon over here, though, are going to get rear charged, and they are most certainly not indestructible. They're going to get piled into by two units of Grail Knights, and though my opponent does cut me off from retreat here, uh, and retreat is not really on my mind, we're going to drain these uh, Sturgeonsmen down, drag them into the muck. Uh, Foot Squires, you can see, still slugging it out. Some of these guys in okay shape, uh, leadership wise. You can see over here the White King gets into the back line, uh, but at this point, it just doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, he's so so low on HP. Even with the peasants being forced to run from zombies, uh, my opponent can't really shut him down for good. And at this point, is going to be GG for the forces of Bretonia. So, <laughs> live there, we're disintegrating uh, before my opponent decides to hop out of the game. So, the Bretonian infantry map could work. Uh, it's 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 one of those things. I think one of, I think there's a few reasons why this meta shifted. One, Grail Knight's got a huge buff in Warhammer 2. Two, uh, f uh, b Battle Pilgrims, which were... Well, I can't even talk about... But Battle Pilgrims, which were kind of the staple of this infantry meta, got nerfed quite a bit. And now they are definitely overpriced, most likely. Uh, people have been debating where they should be price-wise for a while. Some people are saying they should be really cheap. Personally, I think they're probably about 50 gold or so overpriced. But uh, what what was definitely a bit of a problem is that Bretonia doesn't really have a cost-efficient light infantry killer anymore. So that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a problem for them. That said, foot squares are still very cost-effective. That's why we brought front line of them here. Um, men at arms still incredibly cost-effective. One of the best bang for your buck infantry in the game, in my opinion. Um, and the Great Leaks, although it didn't they it didn't always show in this match, they held that front line together. Um, it's likely that the front line would have buckled a long time, a long time beforehand if the Grail Oaks weren't there, because they still provide that plus 12 leadership bar, they still provide that plus, uh, that immunity to, uh, to psychology. And although, too, the Grail Oaks is a bit of a hefty investment, uh, perhaps I would have been better off bringing just one, it's a, it's, it could definitely make a big difference. Um, and two Grail Oaks, you're not going to get too much more. I could have gotten, like, a unit of Men at Arms and Foot Squires for that cost. But it's important to keep in mind that then my opponent could just tear around me somewhere. He could hit me with these Devils of Schwartz off and cause a chain tear route that would just break my entire line. That would have been absolutely disastrous. Uh, you know, Grand Line's still an important unit in this build. Uh, that's, there's no denying that. Uh, Fae Enchantress is very important as well. Uh, Peasant Bows. But, so it's still a combined arms build, but I definitely think that the infantry-centered comps can work. And they might not be necessarily the most competitive, but they're definitely not, uh, say, trash deer. Might not be something you'd really just run as a silly gimmick. Um, like, say, an All Slayer build with dwarves. That's just a silly gimmick. This is something that can work. Um, for my opponent, uh, my main critique in this match would be uh, change it around your Vlad loadout. Um, Vlad's a great lord, in my opinion. He's, the, he's, if anything, a benchmark of how foot lords should be. But one, Blood Drinker is not really... In my opinion, Blood Drinker isn't even worth it normally if you have enough gold for it, both it and uh, the Karstein Ring. Uh, and if you have a choice of Karstein Ring or Blood Drinker, always go with Karstein Ring. If your opponent does try to goon you out, if they try to knock you out quickly, Karstein Ring can save you. Blood Drinker is not going to save you, and realistically, Vlad, with the hunger, as well as the invocations of Nehek, which of course proc the healing from the lore of vampires, is basically never going to go down. He's probably going to hit his healing cap in almost every game you're in. Um, at which point that 90% of wards save is much more viable. Uh, it gets to faction like Bretonia, which doesn't have good lord sniping tools at all, I probably wouldn't even bother with Vlad's, uh, with with either Blood Drinker or with the, uh, I wouldn't bother with Blood Drinker or with uh, the Karstein Ring. I just don't think they're really worth it. Uh, the Karstein Ring can be great if you're trying to fight against Empire and you need to like tank an Illuminar shot. Uh, it's great if you need to uh, push in against Wood Elves. Uh, you can and you get netted by Prey Vanathrema. You can just pop Karstein Ring and say screw you. Uh, so it's, it's it's great from that perspective, uh, but it's not really that useful against Bretonia in my opinion. And you'd be much better off bringing Master Bug Element and Aura Dar of Dark Ranger because that minus four leadership debuff, especially against a faction like Bretonia, can be huge. And uh, Master Bug Element minus forty four melee attack on just on cooldown. That's crazy. That, that could be a huge benefit. Uh, if you're taking those cav fights with the, with Blood Knights, that's that's hugely beneficial. Uh, but that's just my two cents on the matter. Uh, definitely a cool attempt there with the Fargeists, and uh, I, thought, I thought it was a pretty funny game. So I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share down below. Uh, if you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, as usual, do not hesitate to ask. I will do my best 
or uh, to uh, respond to your posts as soon as I'm able. Uh, and with that, uh, I suppose we are done. I thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Why for now?